So this is going to be an introduction to chemical kinetics. And chemical kinetics is the branch of chemistry that is concerned with the rates of chemical reactions. So just to break down what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to discuss what a rate is, what a reaction rate is, and I'm also going to point out some of the equations associated with reaction rates. So first we need to get a good understanding of what a, a reaction rate is. So when we talk about a rate of a chemical reaction, we're talking about how fast the reaction occurs. And as a result, we usually end up dividing by time. So these two examples here, the speed of your car and your hourly pay, those are both rates because you're dividing a change in some quantity per unit time. In the case of the speed of the car, you have a displacement, delta x, and you're dividing that by time. And in the case of your hourly pay, you're taking the change in the amount of money you make over a unit of time, the hour usually, as well. So these are just two examples of rates to show you know, what all rates have in common. Reaction rates are the same way. You're allowing something to change and you're dividing it by a change in time. And in chemical reactions, the thing that we change is the concentration of the reactants and products. So let's look at an arbitrary reaction and see if we can't learn a little bit more about the rates. Okay, so suppose I have the following chemical reaction. H2 plus Br2 yields HBr. And I gotta put a 2 here to balance it. There we go. Okay, so on the left side, on the left hand side of the equation you have reactants those are getting used up and on the right hand side of the equation you have products and those are becoming formed as the reaction proceeds. So let's sort of look at the concentrations of these things graphically. So let's say I want to look at the concentration of HBr and the concentration of H2 over time. So I'm going to construct a concentration versus time plot. My x-axis is going to be time. I'll just say that's in seconds. And my y-axis is going to be molar concentration. So concentration in moles per liter. And the curves for the reactants and products respectively look like this. Now, can you guess which curve corresponds to which? Does the red curve correspond to H2 or HBr? The correct answer is H2. Why? Because like we said earlier, the concentrations of the reactants are decreasing. The reactants are being used up as the reaction proceeds. And notice that this curve sort of represents that. Over time, you have a decrease in concentration. The blue curve is for, is for the concentration of HBr. Since HBr is a product, it starts out at zero concentration and increases as the reaction proceeds. So how do we find a rate of a reaction? That's the question. Generally what we do is we can pick two points. So let's say I want to find out how fast the concentration of HBr is changing. So I'm just going to pick two points on this graph. I'll pick this one here 
and I'll pick this one here. So suppose this time is one second and this time is two seconds. And let's say that this concentration is two molar and this concentration is four molar. To find the rate, all you do is you just find the slope between these two points. The slope of this line. So the slope of this line is simply going to be delta y over delta x, where y is the concentration and x is time. So that's really going to be delta concentration of HBr over delta T. Okay. So we just found the rate of formation of HBr using the slope of the line between these two points. Notice as you reduce the interval between these two points, as your time interval becomes lower and lower and lower, your rate, you get a, a more accurate result as to the rate of your reaction at any specific instant. So we've just found the rate of formation of, we've found an expression for the rate of formation of HBr, but when it comes to reaction rates we actually have to account for, for the stoichiometry of the overall reaction. And there's really only one equation that you have to know when you consider this and that is the following equation. Now this equation corresponds to the following reaction scheme. You have A moles of A plus B moles of B yielding C moles of C plus D moles of D. A, B, C, and D, the capital letters, are the reactants and products themselves. And the little a, little b, little c, and little d, those are the stoichiometric coefficients. So this equation, it says that rate is equal to negative 1 over a, delta concentration of a de over delta t, which is equal to negative 1 over b, concent delta concentration of b over delta t, equals 1 over c times delta concentration of c over delta t, which is equal to 1 over D times delta concentration of D over delta T. So, based on this equation, so th there's actually a variety of ways that you can get the rate. Notice that you can obtain, these are all equivalent quantities provided that you have the balanced chemical equation. So once you have a couple of parameters, you don't really need to know everything about all the other reactants or products, you can just deduce the rate from 1. So, in general the three things that you need to determine the rate of a chemical reaction are, like I said earlier, the balanced chemical equation. You also need the change in concentration for any reactant or product, doesn't matter which, just one will do. And lastly you need a time interval. As you might notice, the three variables in this equation here, in each of these terms, is the coefficient, the change in concentration, and the change in time. And of course, in order to get that coefficient, again, you need the balanced chemical equation. If the, if the equation is not balanced, then it'll be wrong. So. Alright, I hope this video helps and some more kinetic stuff on the way.